All right, welcome back. Uh, this is the third and final lecture for the week uh, for pre-calculus, and uh, this lecture is going to be on section 1.10 from the book on graphs of lines. So we're going to look at a specific family of, of functions, and uh, they all are going to have similar properties. They all are going to be your typical straight lines uh, that you've studied before. They're going to have certain properties that we'll look at, and. Um, uh, we'll, we'll learn how to graph them hopefully very quickly and we'll learn how to recognize them hopefully in several forms and uh, so we'll go ahead and just get started with that right away and uh, not waste too much time. The last lecture was a bit longer. So lines, what is a line? Well you, know, you can think about um, you can think about a road really um, maybe a road that goes you know up sort of a, a mountain and uh, you know so looks something like this try my best to draw it. A line has has things has properties similar to this road. Okay, now a road for the most part, if you think of roads in Nebraska perhaps, <laughs> where I'm from, roads are pretty much straight, right? Roads are just they're just straight. You know, you got to go from x to y, so just go straight between them. There's not much you have to avoid. The odd creek here or there where you build a bridge, but just go straight between them, right? Roads in Nebraska do that as much as, you know, as much as possible. Uh, but roads also go up and down, you know, in their in their in their path. Uh, we usually call that a, a slope, right? Especially here around the Albany area, roads have a, a slope to them. When we're going up and down these big hills, or up and down the mountains just west of us or north of us, um, lines have similar vocabulary terms associated with them, um, a similar to a road. So. <clears throat> I'm going to give you an example of a graph of a line. So this is just a line. A line is, I guess you could say, perfectly straight, right? It's not bent like a parabola or um, it's not curvy. We're going to reserve this word line to be the straight curve this straight graph. Um, this line has what we call a positive slope. Positive slope. It's starting in the bottom left and going to the top right. This line has a negative slope. It's starting somewhere in the top left and falling on the way to the right. Another kind of line is one that has no slope. It's perfectly flat. Zero slope. And then I think you could picture another line that's straight up and down. This one will say it has no slope. <laughs> it's a little bit strange. I would say infinite slope, right? It, infinite, but this is what your text says. So you can think of these things like uh, you know driving in a car on that road. If you're driving up a positive slope, you know, you're driving left to right here, for example, it's like you're climbing. You know, you're, you're climbing up. You're, you're moving positively up. Your height is getting bigger. Okay? A negative slope when you're driving on a road is, is like you're falling down on a roller coaster, right? You're coming down. Your height is decreasing. Zero, uh, zero slope almost perfectly describes those those roads that I discussed in Nebraska, right? Nice flat plains out there, very few hills, very little slope. This last one, no slope, uh, it, it's, it's like a, a cliff face. It's, it's vertical, right? If a line has no slope, it is perfectly vertical like a cliff face. These are the four basic categories of slope. But what is slope? I, I guess formally, we have this idea of what slope is. We've all seen hills or mountains. So we have this idea, but formally, what is slope? Slope is usually given the letter M, clearly because it starts with the letter M. And <laughs> it's defined formally as the rise over the run between any two points on the line. So if we have a line, 
we pick a point, x1, y1, and another point, x2, y2. From this point to this point, how much does it rise? Well, it's we've done this before, it's this height. It's y2 minus y1. We're going to divide that by its run, which is the another word for this horizontal width. It's x2 minus x1. This is formally how you can define the slope of a line. And it's easily how you can compute the slope of a line. Take any two points on the line, label the x and y coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2. Just make sure you're consistent with those numberings. Both these coordinates are 2, and both these are the 1. And then plug them into this formula, and you've got yourself the numerical slope for the line. Okay. And really, what we're, what we're discussing here is it's a rate. It's how many meters or feet or centimeters up does this line go when you go a certain number of meters or feet or centimeters to the right? So if you go to the right a certain distance, how far up will you go? It's a ratio of these two things. So it's a rate of this distance per this distance. Okay. All right. So that is slope. And this brings us to the very, 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 very first form of a line. So slope is, as we just said, it's defined like this. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But what if we only knew one point? Right? What if we did this? What if we only knew one of those points? But we also knew the slope, the numerical value of it. Well, this gives us the very first form of the equation of a line, and it's called point slope form. It's very useful when you know one point and the slope. of a line, but you don't know anything else. For example, we know the coordinate x1, y1 is on the line, and we know the line has a slope m. Those are known, uh, known quantities. But we don't know a third point. We don't know anything else. Well, here you go. Let's multiply both sides of this equation by x minus x1, just straight out of the slope formula. We get this, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is it. If you want to know the equation for a line that has a known slope and a known point on it, all you got to do is fill in this, this little chart, this little formula, and you've got it. For example, what is the equation of a line uh, with the point 10, negative 5, and slope 5. right? It's going up and to the right, and it goes through this point, 10, negative 5. I don't know what the graph necessarily looks like, but I can plug these values in and find the equation. So y minus y1, so it's plus 5, equals 5, that's the slope, times x minus 10. That's the x1. This is the equation for that line that goes through that point and has that slope. So this is the first form, the point-slope form, and it's derived just straight out of the slope formula. right? And it's useful when you only know one point. Another nice form, the one that I, I think is most common, is called slope-intercept form. right? So there's this nice point. There's this nice point. Um, that has uh, um, an x coordinate 
equal to zero. It's called a y-intercept. It always has in that form, right? It's it's zero comma y, right? Let's call it y one, and let's go back to our slope formula. If we know that one of these x's is zero, right? If we know the y-intercept is zero, that turns this whole equation into just this y equals x2 minus nothing. Right? But remember, if y2 and x2, if we don't know a second point, just like in the previous form, let's just drop this number there. And we get this for the slope. If we're computing the slope using the y-intercept, we get this. And if we multiply both sides by x, we get this. y minus y1 equals mx. If we bring the y1 over to the other side, we get the very common form of a line, mx plus y1. Now it is more commonly written with a different letter, mx plus b. But this is called the slope-intercept form. Okay, y equals mx plus b. And it is very useful when the slope and a particular point is known it's the y-intercept, right? In the slope-intercept form, we had any point is known, and the slope is known. In the slope-intercept form, we know the slope, and we know the y-intercept, a specific point. So it's, it's actually very similar to the previous form we had, right? But we know this x1 is 0. So that's that. The next and final uh, form <coughs> is, I think I call it standard form, usually, or general equation, that's what they call it. It's a general. And I think this will make a lot of sense, right? We, we kind of see it up here. We definitely see it here. So the general equation of a line is just this. Any number times y plus any number times x. Use a different letter here plus a number is zero. This is the third and final form for the equation of a line. We've got a first degree y, we've got a first degree x, plus a constant is nothing. You could write it alternatively <coughs> equals c. That's fine. It doesn't, doesn't change a thing. Um, that's that, the general form of an equation for a line. Um, there's two special cases of these equations of lines, and we talked about them right here. Right? I don't think you'll have any problem with a positive slope or a negative slope. That m will just be a positive number or a negative number. But what do you do in the case where you've got no slope or zero slope? And I circled those in the wrong order. So let's look at some of our forms. We'll take we'll take a slope-intercept form. If m is 0, that means we have a horizontal line. Then this form turns into y equals b. y is just a constant. It has a graph that makes a lot of sense. If I just pick a height, b, and I plot all the points that are at that height, this point's at that height, and this point's at that height, so I'm going to plot all those points at that height. There we go. This is the line. And every point has some x-coordinate. I don't care what it is. All I care is that it satisfies this height. Y is b. <clears throat> so if you have a, a, a line with zero slope, you're talking about a horizontal line. And that's the equation for it. But what about the undefined slope? Uh, 
let's let's look at a an example of this. If we pick any two points on this vertical line, their heights are definitely going to be different. But what about their x coordinates? Well, if it's a truly vertical line, great day. If it's a truly vertical line, x1 equals x2. In which case, when you do this division, you're going to get y2 minus y1 equals something. And we're going to divide it by x2 minus x1, which equals 0. That's an issue. So how do you provide a formula for uh, the equation of <clears throat> a vertical line? Right? In our forms that we know, y equals mx plus b, what do we write for that? Do we write infinity for infinite slope? Do we, like our checks, write no x plus b? No, we need to look at a, a sort of a different property of the line that we're working with. What's the one thing we know about this vertical line? It's that all the x's are the same. Right? We can have any y that we want, any height that we want, but all the x's must be the same. And that's it. All x's are something. x equals a constant, right? If I go here and I list the points, c comma y2, c comma y1, if I just plot every point that has the same, that has that x coordinate, and any height that I care about, I've got myself a vertical line. So this is the formula for a vertical line. It's similar to the equation for a horizontal line. Horizontal lines have y equal to some number, the height is some number. Vertical lines have the x equal to some number. And lines that are neither vertical nor horizontal have some slope to them, right, that is adjusting that numerical constant, right? y equals an adjustment plus a constant. There, it's an adjustment of that constant. Okay, so the next thing and the last thing I think for <clears throat> uh, for this are parallel and perpendicular lines. Something straight out of geometry class. So two lines that are parallel, I think it's, it's easy to see, two lines that are parallel they have equal slope, right? If I were to sort of look at the slope of this one and look at the slope of this one, I'm going to find that the slopes are exactly the same. Parallel lines have equal slope. That, that's that's the, the kind of an intuitive, natural fact for us as we as we think about this. I, I hope. And so, if you look at two equations, y equals three x plus six, y equals um, the two y equals six x plus nineteen. If you look at these two equations and you sort of think to yourself, the second one is just the same as three x plus nineteen halves. Look at those slopes. They're the same. They have a different y-intercept, but they have the same slope. These lines are parallel because of that. If they had the exact same y-intercept, they would be literally the same line. But if they have different y-intercepts, they're different lines with the same slope, and so they're parallel to each other. Lines that are perpendicular, on the other hand, right? they meet at a 90 degree angle. There's a nice relationship 
between these two slopes that's not that difficult to, to grasp. Right? So they have a common point here. And uh, so we can use that point in the calculation of slope. But, uh, but I'm going to avoid that. I'm just going to throw the rule at you. So we compute this slope. Right? And if we rotate this 90 degrees, this triangle 90 degrees, what we're going to get is a similar triangle like this. And this height here became this height here. And this becomes this. Which means in the equation of the slope, we're switching the y to, the, we're switching the, the numerator and the denominator. And the pattern that emerges is that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite reciprocal. Okay, so if I took this line, y equals 2x, and I ask, what's the equation of a line that has what's the equation to a perpendicular line? Well, the first thing you need to make sure is this. Here's that slope. Well, that means that m2 must be negative 1 over 2. That's the first thing you need to make sure happens, that you compute the opposite of the reciprocal of that slope. And then you're, you're in business. Negative 1 half x plus anything. This is going to be perpendicular to the first line because it has opposite the opposite reciprocal slope. And that guarantees that those two lines meet at a point at a 90 degree angle. And that's it for this lecture, right? We're just talking about one class of functions lines. We talked about perpendicular lines and parallel lines and we talked about the slope of lines and I drew some, some, some allegories I suppose, or drew some relations with slopes of roads on hills and in Nebraska where there are no hills and then the cliff faces out in Colorado uh, where the, the slopes are infinite. But um, I hope that helps and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.